how many of you are therapists or owners or managers of um, salons who treat patients, clients with acne? Okay, almost all of you. Great. How many of you are just curious about the topic? Okay, quite a few of you. And how many of you just realize that, oh my goodness, this is the wrong talk. I need to get out of this room. <laughs> it's your last chance. Anybody? Good. Okay, so I'm in the right place. So, um, first of all, welcome to my talk. My name is Dr. Terry, and this is my talk, The Hormonal Acne Solution. And um, before I start, I just want to thank Professional Beauty for inviting me to speak, and to all of you for your time, your energy, and any commitment you had to make to be here today. Okay. Now, this is a huge topic, and um, I even wrote a book about it. And on the, each chapter, I can do an hour talk on each chapter. So what I want to do today, because we only have 15 minutes together, I actually want to just give you a few new ideas to think about. Okay, so not the boss standard skincare, skin treatment, because that you can do a lot of that outside. But here I just want to give you more new things that you can think about outside the box when you see new clients with acne. Okay, would that be okay? Yeah. So at the end of the talk, I want to share with you what really causes hormonal acne. The three things you must do together with your skincare and your skin treatments, so to make sure that you can manage, prevent, maintain, you know, kind of, kind of good skin, prevent acne for the long term. And why are therapists, you, very important in the fight against acne? And I get very interesting comments from my clients when they come to see me. Some have never seen a therapist before, okay? some have been very scared of a therapist, so I want to share that with you, what they tell me. So they will not tell you, you know, when you're in the room, you get this scared, you might poke them, if you like, before you treat them. But so I want to share with you some of that. So how many of you find that useful? Really? Now, I need to give a disclaimer for this talk. I am not a dermatologist, okay? I am a doctor, yes. I call myself an integrative cosmetic and skin doctor. Okay? So, kind of looking at skin health inside out. Dermatologists look at more diseases of the skin. I like to look at more the health of the skin and how to prevent and maintain that. This presentation is aimed at adult acne, above 18 years, okay? I am not against antibiotics, birth controls, or reactive. It does have a place in some patients, some, sorry, I've got to say clients because I call my patient patients, but I know you guys call clients. Some clients, they do need it if it's very severe, but some clients would never ever touch it. Or for whatever reason, medically, they cannot take it. Okay. And this presentation is a simplistic overview, so it's not meant for as a medical advice. And if you do decide to use any of these tips, okay, or share them with your clients, and I do recommend you tell your clients too, to tell them. If you do decide to change anything, if you are on any medication or have any health issues, please consult your practitioner or physician before making those changes to protect yourself as well, okay? So, before that, how many of you have seen me talk before? Okay, all of you, hello, thank you so much. So not running away before. <laughs> so, um, is it okay since we're going to spend some time? Is it okay if I share a bit about myself? Yeah, thank you. So, I've been a doctor for more than 11 years now. I first trained as a surgeon before going into aesthetic medicine. But after being a bit into aesthetic medicine, I realized that, you know, a line is just, people come for more than just a line on the face, if you like. And due to my own health problems, I went to the States to study functional medicine, hormonal balancing, and kind of combined that with my whole anti-aging and advanced skin care treatments. Now, I'm also the global skincare expert for Body Shop International. I was appointed that role um, since October last year. And I've been awarded Rising Star as well as um, Best New Clinic and the finalist for, ooh, I've got music. Drum roll. <laughs> no, okay, it's okay. Um, Best New Medical Practitioner for the year last year. So, my concepts of acne have been featured in lots of magazines, so you can look more on my website, www.drterry.com, so you can look more on that. So I'm a regular contributor at Get the Gloss, and was featured in Marie Claire as the hormonal acne specialist as well. But my big inspiration, for those who don't know me, is really my mother, okay? It's um, my late mother. That's, that's an old picture. In those days, we don't have you know, digital um, cameras. So this is a scan picture. Of, um, that's me in the middle. I don't have the pointer. Uh, wearing dungarees, if you like, so I didn't have very good fashion sense. <laughs> so my mother, um, she had very bad skin. 
I lost. Oh, anyway. Yeah, thanks. Um, my mom had very bad skin, um, acne. By the time you know she was adult, she's had scars, psoriasis, eczema, a varicose vein. She had five children. I was the eldest of five. And three weeks of me starting university, and um, she was 46 years old. Um, she suddenly passed away. She was the most positive person and most active person and very healthy, but she passed away very suddenly from a viral flu. And it was only after she passed away that I realized how her confidence affected her, how her skin really, you know, really affected her confidence. And it kind of inspired me to help as many women as I can to feel confident in the skin. Now, my mother was not perfect, as all of us. I'm not perfect, but I still have bad days, good skin, bad, good skin days and bad skin days. Okay? So, I want to kind of help my clients and I want you to help your clients feel that acne is not a disease. You can't catch acne from somebody else, okay? And acne is not to be ashamed of. It's something that you, it's a good reflection and something to work with, really. Don't work against it, really. Because, so, and that's why I dedicated my first book, um, The Hormonal Acne Solution, which came out last year, um, to my mother. And it's just really a lot about, you know, general, it's aimed at consumers. Okay, so how many of you actually read the book? Good, so I've got new buyers. Very good, thank you. <laughs> so, so the book really was, is really aimed at consumers. And it's written in very simple language, and I like to make things fun, you know, make things kind of simplistic and not scary. Because how many of you have clients coming to you who never, you know, dared to come take off their makeup because they're very bad? Right. Mm. So maybe some of you have experienced that before. You know, I had that when I was younger. And some of my clients never go to see a doctor. I, I saw a statistic that said that 80% of the population have acne, but only 11% actually seek help. 11%. That's really little. You know, so how many of you are really <coughs> hiding at home with acne? So it's really a very debilitating condition <coughs> or skin problem. So I wanted to make it really fun. So this is what I want you guys to, to get away. You guys can still hear me, right? Dad? <laughs> oh, sorry. I was a cheerleader when I was in high school, so you guys cannot hear me that I was not trained very well. <laughs> okay, so at the end of my talk, I hope that you guys can come away with a little few things that you can, not only just to treat your clients, but also to inspire them, to make them feel really proud of their skin, and they want to look after it, want to take care of it. So that you know it's not something to be ashamed of. So let's get to it. So what's the statistic of adult acne? 80% population. So you know, you guys know this. 20 to 50 years so you know, the face, chest, back, arms, mainly reddish nodules around the mouth and the jaw. They're more resistant to, to traditional treatments. You know, when you're a teenager, maybe they're good with antibiotics, birth control pills, acne. But when you're adults, you're more resistant. So why is this? Okay. Now, lucky we don't have time or else I'll quiz you on this. Okay. So why do people get acne? Okay, we know overproduction of oil. We've got you know, salicylic acid, you know, kind of facials to kind of reduce those oil. Overgrowth of P-acne bacteria. You get antibiotics, either orally or topically. Sluggish turnover of cells, so you get blocking of pores. So what do you have? Maybe like chemical peels, you know, kind of exfoliation, glycolic peels or glycolic ingredients. So anything that slough off the, um, increase the keratinization, oh, sorry, reduce the keratinization. Defective pore. Defective pore means normally a pore. How many know what a defective pore is? Okay, right, so you okay if I share that with you? Good. So defective pore is, so if you imagine a pore, which you know you squeeze out the oil, and then it lubricates our skin, which we need it to make sure we're waterproof and we don't puff up when we go into the rain, okay? Mm -hmm. So a defective pore means this pore is slightly kicked so that the oil doesn't come out properly and smooth, so it backtracks and stays in the pore. You can get that backlog. So a defective pore can be due to genetics, it can be due to scarring for whatever reason. So a good way to treat defective um, pore is a retinol, vitamin A, because you're actually changing the skin. Like even lasers also can help because you're actually changing the skin, so you're going deeper. Okay. The next one is inflammation. Okay. Have you ever noticed when you get a spot one place, Next to it, there's another one waiting. You know, then it combined with them two. Or got one big one. It's horrible. And so inflammation, you get inflammation inside out. So you can have um, treatments, you know, to anti-inflame. 
And the last one is hormonal imbalance, which we rarely really talk about. Really. So that's why today I really want to touch on the hormonal imbalance part. Now, at the end of this, um, I mean, how many, because at the end of this, how many of you would want to slide um, a, this co a copy of this presentation? Yeah? Oh, okay, good. So at the end, I'll, I'll see how I can do that. Okay, so now, me and mortals like us, we get acne, but don't forget, you know, the celebrities get acne too. Really? You know, so they're not, so my favorite, Cameron Diaz, Victor <laughs> Beckham, even Britney Spears, and Megan Fox, they get acne too. Really? Okay, so it's not just for us mere mortals. So think of hormonal imbalance or hormonal acne is caused by a fluctuation of hormones. Now when you're a teenager, okay, you get a, a, a rise of male hormones to testosterone, which you need to grow, build your beard, other places, okay, and um, to build muscle. Okay, so that you get a, 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 a raised hormones because you need it during teenager. You just need to balance everything else, you know, make sure you have a good routine. Well, teenagers are quite easy. Good routine, they're pretty good. But when you're an adult, there's more fluctuations. Okay, so teenager, you get high, that's normal. But when you're an adult, it's more fluctuations when you get the acne. Okay? Why do you get fluctuations hormones? So this um, slide will talk about what causes hormonal acne. So what causes fluctuation of hormones, what causes hormonal acne, that, that causes hormonal acne. So this is all around us. And when you look at this, you think, like, oh, I knew that. Oh, it's all common sense for you. But. Okay, toxic environment and lifestyle. Now, each one of my girls, I actually ex expand it and break it down to like what actually that means. Modern diet and modern food. Okay, quick fixes and skincare habits. Overuse of antibiotics and medication. Okay. I've, got, have, I've had patients who've been on say, 10 years of antibiotics and never, it doesn't make a difference for them but they've been on 10 years of antibiotics. I say, why? So I don't know, my GP just gives it to me. Okay, so the problem is, you know, I mean, I, I, I've got a lot of doctors' friends who are GPs, but they, they use antibiotics too much. So if you do have somebody, and in your client history as well, you know, ask them, antibiotics, how long have you used it? How often have you used it, really? You know, so you want to make sure what's going on, okay? So these are things that can, can cause hormonal acne. Now they all can interrelate, so I won't go into that because when my patients come to see me, I usually give them a 15 page questionnaire before they come to see me to complete. So that when I see them, I can look at everything internally and externally as well. So the holistic treatment, when we, when we go through it, this is where you guys come in. Skin care, skin products, very important. Skin routines, let's see, just realize. And then skin treatments. So that's important. So that's one side of the equation. The other side of the equation, we need to reduce inflammation inside and out. We need to balance the sugars. Okay? Because sugars basically, one thing about sugars, which I'll talk about why is it important, why does sugar increases oil production? People think oil increases oil production. It's actually sugar that increases oil production. Okay? And then balance your hormones. Okay? Now, the, that side, Okay, like I said, that's, it will be a huge topic, but the next few slides, I want to just talk about the more common hormonal imbalances. Okay, because with those, then you, it, it makes you say, okay, could it be this hormone imbalance, and then you start working that way. Okay, so this is just a simplistic view. All make sense so far? Yeah? Any questions so far? No, you're standing to silence. <laughs> okay, so the first, Hormonal imbalance is high cortisol. Everyone knows this. Everyone knows this. Okay, so what is cortisol? So first of all, how many of you know what hormones are? How many of you know what hormones are? Okay, how many of you don't know what hormones are? Okay, so I'm not sure. That's okay. Okay, so I'm going to just give benefit of doubt everyone. So in a very simplistic view, hormones are basically chemical messengers in our body. Okay, allows transportation, communication between different parts of the body. Okay. It's in charge of everything. Makes you kind of grow up, makes you shrink, okay, as you grow older. Okay. It makes you fall in love, it makes you fall out of love, it makes you feel sexy, it makes you feel horny, it makes you feel out of sex, you know, that kind of thing. Makes you pregnant, makes you keep a baby, makes you have postpartum depression. Hormones are in charge of everything. Okay, even men as well. Men, okay, hormones are important because it gives you this. 
keeps your hair. Okay, if you don't have hormones, this will come out. This will go. <laughs> okay, so hormones are important. In balance. In balance. Okay. So, there are about 50 plus hormones in our body. Okay, with 300 plus functions and loads. So I'm not going to go there because it's like a huge textbook and even I as a doctor will need to like look through it. So just a few ones for you to, to remember. So high cortisol, cortisol is the stress hormone. We need it in small amounts. Okay. High cortisol increases blood sugar, increases blood pressure, increases inflammation. Okay. We need it a little bit because it helps us focus, concentrate, run, basically. Okay. So imagine if you're working late night, you know, finishing a project or having to pick up kids from school, or, you know, doing the accounts at night time, basically. Is cortisol keeping you away? Okay. Or saving your baby from um, moving vehicle or fighting a, what's that, a shoe, fighting for a shoe in a sale, basically. <laughs> All that in the cortisol, okay? So little cortisol is good because we need it, but if it's too much, it can cause problems, okay? So we'll talk about what problems it cause. So, the symptoms of high cortisol, I feel like wired but tired. You're tired but you can't sleep. You're just buzzing all the time. Okay, your brain is always constantly going when you're sleeping. You can't live without your coffee. How many of you can't live without your coffee? Yes, I see so proud. Proud. That's okay. Just <laughs> that's, that's very true. I had a client who drank 17 cups of coffee a day for one point. 17, yeah, but she was very wild tired. She had, she was the other extreme, basically. She almost um, burned out that time, so she needed it to go. But my, my brother in Australia, he's a uh, barrister, um, Australian barrister, so he brews coffee for a career. So he's well known, so he loves coffee, so it's connoisseur taste, so it is a connoisseur. Absolutely, it's connoisseur. So, and also you get digestion problems as well, okay? Because cortisol, like we talk about, cortisol is an infl inflammatory, inflammatory um, hormone. So if it's too much of it, it can cause a lot of raised sugar in your body. It can cause damage to your body. It breaks it down, wear and tear. It makes you older. So how many of you see clients or even yourself or friends who've had a stress for six months or one year and come back look 10 years older? Basically, It's from the cortisol. Okay. So think about, so how does cortisol create more acne? Same thing, raising blood sugar. Okay. Causing inflammation. And then breaking down other skin calming hormones, which we talk about afterwards. Okay, so high cortisol. So in your questionnaire, if you like, I mean, in my book, there's actually a, a template of questionnaire of the specific hormones. So you can take it yourself as well, or you can maybe use, you know, some that you feel that okay, which one is more my clients? If you then you can pick and see. Okay. Now this doesn't mean that you can go and diagnose because it's difficult. You can diagnose with a saliva test to check how your cortisol does throughout the day. But this just gives you an idea, hmm, maybe it could be that. So how can we manage or balance it? Okay. So with cortisol, I see it like a fire. Okay. So we need to calm the fire down. So we need to bring in the fire, the fire brigade. Okay. So ask your clients, check your gut. Do they have candida? Do they have parasites? Especially someone who's had a lot of antibiotics in the past, their gut is going to be a mess. Okay. So ask them, have you checked your gut? Really? Check for food sensitivity. Maybe some of your salon spas or clinic are quite more advanced. You maybe you have a nutritionist there, or maybe you do you know, uh, food sensitivity testing. I know you've seen kits um, in, in, in the exhibition, so you could do that, really. You know, so they can, you can even buy online. It's quite easy. Just test maybe 50 to 90 food tests. Okay, so that can do that as well. Because all this, anything that basically causes a trigger, so your body's in stress. You may think it might be emotional stress or physical, but sometimes it can be internal stress that you do not know of. Right? Okay, so think of that as well. Now, when I see my clients, I put them on an acne elimination diet. Okay, so removing sugar, caffeine, dairy, gluten, nuts, eggs, alcohol for three weeks. Some of you, your eyes are like, oh my god, I cannot do that. I know the first week you would die, you know, the first week you would die, but the second week you'll feel amazing, and the third week you'll feel like, oh yeah, whatever. Okay. So, acne elimination diet. Okay. So, um, in the book, it does help you go through it. Okay. So you can help your clients do that, or even if you can see which one is the main one, just say, just try, just try. What you do is remove all for three weeks, and after three weeks, add each one back for three days each. 
Does that make sense? Okay. So add sugar. Three days. Okay. That makes three days. Caffeine. Three days. Dairy. Three days. Gluten. Okay. And then see what happens to your skin. Because when when whatever you put in, then that will trigger up. This if they cannot afford a food sensitivity test. This is a, a cheap way to do a food sensitivity test. Okay, it's a bit longer, but this is a it's a everyone can do this. Okay. And if people might ask supplements, and maybe some of you can um, do whole supplements, vitamin C, vitamin B, and omega three. Those are really good. So kind of anti-inflammatories, basically. Okay. So the next hormone balance is high testosterone. Okay, so testosterone we know is the male hormone. Okay, now women we do have testosterone as well. Okay, so we don't think that women don't have testosterone is important because it keeps our skin firm. Okay, it keeps us taut, the muscle taut. It also gives us confidence and it gives us sexiness, basically. Okay, now a little bit of testosterone. Um, testosterone I like to look at as a. Do you know the Lynx the Lynx um, spray? The latest effect, right? A little bit is nice, too much, it's like, yeah, it's a bit oily and cheesy, basically, okay? <laughs> so, with high testosterone, as we know, so testosterone basically, you know, it attacks the, so if you look at the, so that's the follicle, okay, so oil production, testosterone, they are receptors by, by the pore, and then testosterone, basically causes it to excrete oil, okay? So testosterone is important because of mainly the oil production. So when you have high testosterone, you can get oily hair, oily skin, you may get a weight problem, uh, facial hair, so clients who come in with facial hair problems with acne as well, could it be a high testosterone? Maybe they have PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. Okay, so that is um, med that's a medical problem in a way because that will actually produce um, um, high testosterone. Diabetes, um, patients who have family history of diabetes as well, basically, because you have an insulin. So testosterone is linked to insulin. Insulin is a sugar regulating hormone. Okay, so that would also affect the production of oil as well. And bodybuilders. Okay, so bodybuilders actually have a problem with acne. A lot of them, because body when you bodybuilding is when you lifting weight is good because you're actually increasing muscle mass, which is important to increase your testosterone, which then keeps your face nice and firm. But if you do too much of it, you actually can produce way too much testosterone for your own body and you can get breakouts. Really. Okay, so you can ask that. What's your exercise regimen? Okay. So all good, clear, rate high testosterone. Yeah. So I like to say, you know, how would we tame those bad boys? Great. Now, I have not watched Fifty Shades of Grey, okay, so I've not read the book either, okay, so I've just seen a lot of, um, what's the actor's name? Jamie. Jamie. Jamie Dorman, that's her. So I, I guess I'll be like, okay, I, I know that, I read it, I saw it, but I don't want to say anything. <laughs> okay, so there's nothing to do with it, it's just, I just couldn't find a picture of one, so I thought this would be the best one. Maybe. So take me those bad boys. So how do we do it? Add cinnamon to everything, basically. So cinnamon is great to, in a way, regulate your sugars, basically. Okay, so, so that's a good thing to add. Make sure you get a good dose of vitamin D. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna pronounce this, myo inositol. You can get this from health food stores. Okay, you can get it in powder form or tablet, but I like it in powder form. You can put it in your smoothies. Um, and so that basically regulates your sugars. So, Sugars. So why why I talk about sugars now? Okay. So <coughs> sugars basically converts testosterone into a more potent version of it called dihydrotestosterone (DHT). Okay. So this more potent, you may have less testosterone, but if you have taking more sugar, you'll convert more of what you have into the more potent version, and that will cause more oil production. Okay, so it's not really oil that causes oil production. Production is actually sugar that causes oil production. Okay, so that's why you want to regulate your sugar. So if somebody craves sugars a lot, then this is a this is a good <coughs> plan for them. So these are basically to help them regulate their sugars in then in where 
help them regulate and balance their testosterone as well. <coughs> Chromium picolinate, so it, this is an um, over-the-counter supplement. So chromium picolinate help you um, regulate sugars again, but also helps you curb your sugar cravings as well. And then if they haven't tested, ask them to go to your GP and just check for, uh, do an ultrasound scan of their pelvis, check if they have polycystic ovary syndrome. Right. Now people might think, you know, the typical picture of a, a PCOS patient is um, overweight, okay, facial hair and acne. That's the typical trio of symptoms. But there are, I do have patients with PCOS who are, are, are slim, who are skinny, you know, so, and some who, who are overweight who don't have PCOS, you know. So if you're not sure, just ask them, Maybe go and see your GP for to, type, to do a scan. Okay. Good. You guys can see that because it's just real. Okay. So the next hormone is the estrogen. Okay. Now I call estrogen the diva hormone. Okay. So estrogen is our female hormone. It's so important. Okay. Because the diva basically gives us boobs, gives us hips, makes us feel like a woman. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it gives us nice kind of plump cheeks, you know, kind of hydrated skin, smooth and everything. So estrogen is so important. But if you have too much estrogen, everything spills, okay? Everything, you feel bloated, you feel swollen, really painful breast. You might get grumpy and moody and you might feel like a bitch. <laughs> so that's high estrogen, okay? So I've got... Some of my patients who know, who know me so well, or whatever, they'll, they'll tell their friends that if they have grumpy or say, you know, your diva's out, or your estrogen is too high. Go check it out or something like that. Okay, so what do you, so why, how do you get acne with that? Okay, so we estrogen think about it, so it's over too much, basically, you're producing too much of stuff. So estrogen is important, I say, it basically thickens your uterus, ready for implantation for a baby, okay? Gives you, builds um, fatty tissue for the breast. But if you have too much estrogen, um, another condition called estrogen dominance, you can get overgrowth of um, uterus and get cancer. Yeah. Too much overgrowth, you can get cancer of boobs, you know, the breasts. Okay. This is too much. We're talking about too much. Okay. So with skin, really, you have too much. You know, so you get overgrowth, basically. You get keratinization, the skin, too much, too much oil. You know, so you get too much of stuff. Okay. So with high estrogen. It's very important. Normally, you get high estrogen if you're from 35 onwards. You tend towards, basically. Okay. So, how do we manage it? Now, I like to call this appeasing the diva or letting the diva go. So, you want to make sure you get extra fiber and turmeric in your diet. Okay. So, once estrogen is used, it basically gets excreted in the, the gut. Okay. So, if you're not going regularly, it basically gets reabsorbed into your body. So it's estrogen that you do not want. Okay. So the extra fiber is good, and turmeric also helps to kind of break the estrogen down to the, the, the non-potent version of it. Okay. So that's very important. Lose excess weight and reduce alcohol. So the reason why I say this is because fat holds estrogen. That's why Mother Nature is amazing. Okay. It's because after menopause, when we don't eat estrogen, we start putting on the weight in the belly, right? The reason why is because then the fat produces the estrogen instead of your ovaries. Does that make sense? You know, so Mother Nature knows what it's doing. You know, so that's why the reason. So when I see my patients, you know, when we do our hormone testing, then if they if they are imbalanced, then if they need to lose, so we need to make sure as so we don't lose everything, really, because it can be also detrimental. You have no estrogen when you're older because you need estrogen to maintain strong bones. Well, so everything is balanced. Eat less red meat. You know, everyone talk about red meat <coughs> having artificial hormones and everything. So red meat is be careful as well. Better quality sleep up your mel melatonin. Okay, so melatonin is a, a night hormone. Okay, uh, a night hormone which basically is a great anti wrinkle because it's a great antioxidant. It doesn't help when you have a lot of light pollution. Yeah, it doesn't help if you're traveling a lot. Now, I, I, my clinic's in Mayfair, and I have a lot of international clients. So a lot of them travel. I have a lot of professional people from the city and everything. So a lot of them travel. So their sleep is out of whack. In the States, you, you can actually buy melatonin supplements. 
over the counter. In UK, you need a prescription. Okay, so melatonin, people usually take it for to prevent jet lag. If you like. Okay, so I won't say just take it, but you know, it's something to consider. If you like. okay. Next is brassica cruciferous vegetable. These are all the things with florets, basically broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. You know, all those things that grow from the ground. So all that is a, a great to soak up the excess ishi. And the last one, dim 200 milligram per day. I'm not gonna pronounce the whole name because it's a long name, but that is basically um, like an enzyme that converts the estrogen to a <coughs> more friendly version so they can be excreted out. So it doesn't become the bad version, okay? So it's dim 200 milligram. And that you can get in the whole, whole food store, health food store without a doctor's prescription as well. Okay, so if you, you yourself or your clients got um, tender breasts, you know, bloatedness, you know, do all that and then ask them to consider that as well. Okay. All clear? Good? Okay. And the last one, really, is my favorite. Okay, low progesterone. So progesterone, I like to call it the diva's calming best friend. Okay. It's a skin calmer. It's great because it helps you sleep stabilizes the moods, makes you feel nest, nesting, protective, friendly. It's a great, great hormone. But we get low because we either have too much stress, we break it down too fast, aging, okay, so we're not producing it enough from the ovaries. Little or no ovulation, either extreme exercise, um, medication, even birth control pills. Sometimes my clients, they come to me and, and tell me, you know, even if they're on birth control, it doesn't help their acne. So it doesn't mean that's one fifth size for all. Okay. So low progesterone is another one, it's a favorite of mine. So how would you manage low progesterone? Uh, pardon? Yes. Is the, um, the extreme exercise, yes. is it causing low progesterone? Or <coughs> that's, a, that's a good question. So just so you okay if I answer that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the production of hormones come from cholesterol. Okay, so you do need good cholesterol in your body. So people eat like vegan or, or, or really diet diets, restrict diets. And that's not good as well because your hormones will, will go. So the pathways to produce the different hormones, okay? Example, the stress hormone, the, um, the progesterone, the estrogen, they come from the same pathways, okay? Now, stress, extreme exercise, puts stress on the body. So you're producing more cortisol. And it's because of this production of more cortisol, the pathways needs to divert. Okay, so it's the last. Correct, absolutely. So you're, you're diverting it so that your body can sustain itself, basically. Your body is trying to protect you. It would protect you first and then worry about the reproduction, skin, and aging later on. It needs to protect you first, really. Okay, so it needs to produce cortisol first. So until this is satisfied, that will always be less, if you like. So for, for clients who are extreme exercise, I always say that. Try to intersperse with relaxing, breathing, exercise, yoga, massages. So you want to make sure you recover. Okay, so boost your cortisol in other ways so that it doesn't affect your production in elsewhere. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So how do we love our coming best friend now? So tell me, how would you love your best friend? How would you love your best friend? Not a trick question. Spend time with it. Pardon? Spend time with it. Very good. I like that. Okay. More hugs and spend more time with your friends. It is scientifically shown. So hugs increases another skin um, calming hormone called oxytocin. Hanging out with friends boosts your progesterone as well. Basically. So if you want to exercise me and still hang out with friends, maybe do like a running club or you know, go to class with friends or something like that. You know, so more hugs, hanging out with friends, those are important. Don't forget when you're in a treatment with clients, touch, 
relaxation. All that helps you reduce cortisol, boost your progesterone. So, so don't think it's just that. You're doing a lot of other things as well. Now, I've been in clinics that you're rushing between rooms. Basically, okay, we do this treatment here. Okay, we need to move you another room. How would you like, who, how would you feel if you were to be doing that? Would you be quite stressed? You know, so I know, you know space is, is, you know, is expensive. Like, but you know, make sure you give that time for the client, especially with acne patients. It takes, took a lot of them time for them to come to see you know, first of all, then trust you to follow your, your program. Then after that, you want to make sure that you give them the time, basically, you know, so that you know, they will never be ever before touch their own skin. So for somebody else to touch their own, their skin is a huge thing. And then later on, as they get better, let them touch it. You know, it's a, it's a huge, I mean, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a great, I mean, it's a great personal thing. I cry sometimes when I see my patient, when they get better, you know, so I do get emotional with my clients. Okay? I know I'm not supposed to go because I'm supposed to have that doctor-patient relationship thing, but I can't help it because it's such, a, it's such a wonderful thing if you do get help your clients to do that. So more hugs and hang out, friends. So give hugs to your clients. You know, it's okay. <laughs> of course, once they say it's okay. Of <laughs> 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 like, what is this? <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> add more turmeric time with oregano. That's another one as well. Time. I'm just going to speed this up a bit. Uh, <clears throat> increase vitamin B rich foods and increase magnesium rich foods. So all these will boost the production of um, progesterone. And also you can add chasperi, BTEX. Um, this you can easily get on the, any health food store as well. So that's uh, from a tree. And you can just do about 15 to 20 droplets in there. So it's a weak, it's a herbal plant basically, and it's got weak prostogenic effect. So some patients, you know, once they use that, it's actually very good to calm them down, but also clear their skin a lot better as well. Okay, so I'm just going to very briefly talk about um, how I work with my clients, and then how you know if you do want to work with me and everything. So with this one, I work with my clients on the hormone adult acne system basically. So it's a six-month cycle program okay, where I calm the skin inside out, improve the gut health and balance sugars, and balance hormones and cure the acne. And then if I need to repair pigmentation and treat these scars. Okay, so it's not for everyone because like you said, some patients, they don't have, they don't, they, they want it now. How many of you are like, yes, I So they want the antibiotics, they want the acne, they want it now, they don't want to be bothered and all this kind of stuff. And everything. Okay, so I've got, you know, I, you've got to, Choose your clients as well who you want to take this part. But some clients are saying no, 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 you know, and everything. Some clients have done their research, they don't want to do an antibiotic, or maybe they have family history of cancer, they definitely do not, or clots, they don't want to be on birth control pills, really. You know? So these are really routes to, for more natural routes. Okay. So how, when I, now I have a therapist in my, my clinic, and we do more medical facials, so chemical peels and extraction. So I'm from Malaysia originally. And in Malaysia, we, our facial is about one and a half hours more, sometimes three hours. When extracting, we can spend half an hour to 45 minutes extracting. Okay? I know it's not a, a common thing here in UK, really, you know, either because the training or whatever, because you're worried of hurting. But I have clients who say, I really want to be extracted. You know, so don't worry about it. You need a good extraction because, like you say, inflammation, we need to get it out. You know, why you're so important is, we need to work hand in hand. I need you guys really so that when they come to me, if for whatever reason they come to me for for extra help, really, then I can be rest assured that okay, good, there's somebody to do your extractions or do your peels or do your regular facials and everything. So my clients, when they come to me, so like you said, some of them never go to facials. Number one, because they don't trust them. They don't think they can work, you know, or they just put loads and loads of products on me and then it just broke me out. Okay. Or other things that oh they just, you know. Zip, zip here, then that's it. You know, my skin doesn't feel clean still. Really. You know, so now I have met some amazing therapists. You know, some I I go to some of them basically. You know, so you guys can do so much, so much. You know, so then I don't have to do so much as well. Really. Okay, so with that, okay, so I I decided to create this program because I I've, I've had therapists. Um, who have been sending clients to me, really, you know. And usually what I like to do is, I, I always send them back to, I like working with other people. You know? I don't like working on my own, 
you know, so if they have a nutritionist, great, you work with nutritionists, and I work with their nutritionist. Therapist, great, I'm going to work with your therapist. Basically. It's only if they don't have, then I can help. I'm going to work on the hormone side and the gut health and everything else. Really. So a skin support program is just supporting, you know, a client who already has the support, the other places. So we do a skin vitality test. So skin vitality test looks at your hormones. Okay, so you do a salivary test to check your cortisol. Do a blood spot test to check all your other hormones as well. So the hormones we talked about plus others as well. Okay, and then plus two consultations. So one before the test, um, together with the test results, to look through the test results, you know, and explain what else to do. And give you a report so you can take back to your therapist or yourself to 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 work together with it. And I review in three weeks time, basically, so make sure that you're on the right track. Really. So that's a total of six nine seven. Okay. So that's just I came up with, you know, just deciding that okay, if if that's something as an interest path. Okay. Now, how many of you have? Okay, so I've just noticed the time. How many of you have found it useful? What we've talked about? It's quite a lot of information. I know. So how many of you still want this like slides? Okay, good. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do a slide share, and then uh, I will kind of send it out to you. Okay, so. Now, it's difficult to get all your emails on writing because we don't have much time. So, what I want to do is. Uh, oh, shoot this. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, this website, www.thehormonalactivesolution.com, uh, if you go on there and if you click on, yes, you want to be updated on the you know, new things and everything on the VIP list, and then I can send that out to you, basically, so that I know where to send it to. And because um, I wanted to give time to, to answer some questions as well. Now, how many of you would find it beneficial if you, okay, how many of you, because a lot of this concept is in my book and more, really, and then you, you're welcome to share it with your um, therapist or even use yourself as well. How many of you will find it useful to have a copy? Um, thanks, great talk. Just a question about um, for reducing the estrogen, you mentioned about the reduction of red meat. Is yes. it sort of natural organic meat and reared and there's then no more used? Is that it's okay? Yeah. yeah. They're putting out the coffee. Do you keep that all right? <laughs> 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 I'm I'm I know, I know. <laughs> oh. Repeat the question. Okay, so the question is um, coffee, decaf coffee. Is decaf coffee okay? Really, you know, so so I was telling patients start coffee, which you are, then maybe you know remove, um, yeah, so replace decaf. One, so maybe let's say you, you drink three cups of coffee a day. I'm not saying you do, but you know, just example. Then maybe remove a decaf and then uh, remove one coffee and then replace the decaf, and maybe end up with three decaf. Let's say for example, then slowly add remove one and then have a tea, and then does that make sense? Basically. So for that period of time, I can do it count as part. Yeah, if you can, if you can, but like you said, if someone's, yeah. someone's had 17 cups of coffee a day and you suddenly start, they're going to go on. You're going to kill somebody. Okay, so with those, you're going to be more fresh, you know, but decaf, yeah. Yes? Do you think about blood alcohol or even females? Are you mean as well? Yes, orally? Yes, yes, yes. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I know, those are good. Yeah, I do recommend for estrogen as well. Yeah, okay. probably easier. So the question is, uh, is soya milk good for... Soya, that's a big topic. Really. Yeah, soya, you know, because there's a lot of debate at the moment with soya products, really GMO and non-GMO, you know, so... I always say this, uh, if you know the sauce, the organic sauce, um, they say it's not GMO and everything, and it's better, you know, but if you can choose um, almond or coconut milk, um, I would prefer, if you like, you know, so, um, but if they don't like soya, it's better than dairy, if you like, yeah, Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, what should you want for just a Progesterone are great. For, depending on the client, I said, really, whether they are, um, so, does anyone have, has this, everyone know about progesterone cream? So, not much. Okay, so progesterone cream is very easy um, bought in the States, very small 2%, which you can 
can use. Usually it's more for women in the perimenopause stage which they use it to calm them down and everything. But for acne, I would I would say if you're using any hormones, just better to check first before you start because some people actually can have a reaction to hormones. But thank you very much. But I'm here next five minutes. You're welcome.